Welcome back everyone to my studio. I'm Kathy Arbor and today is Watercolor Tuesday. And it's spring and everything's starting to grow. Even though we were having a cold time. We had snow and freezing rain past week. But that's part of spring, isn't it? So if you were with me on Thursday and... Thursday, I was late because my hydro went out because of the ice storm we had. But I did manage to come back on. But it was a, a about an hour and a half stream. And I showed you some fun stuff. These um, so easy uh, little gadgets that I've had in my possession for quite a few years but never used. And they're these little rollers that you can uh, take off and then put back on. And it has these little spikes. And it goes into the paper and evenly distributes a hole in your paper so you can sew it. I, I think these are really an awesome idea if you don't want to lug out your sewing machine or maybe you don't have a sewing machine. And there's many different stitch um, types that you can get also. So this one, um, you can do all of these stitches with this, just this one. And more probably if you want to play with it. Um, this one here, it's a blanket stitch. And then you could change them up again. This one here uh, is the burst they call it so little stars and stuff and then this one here is loop-de-loop -loop. so i thought these were cute and they are a great way of adding a little little something extra to your pages now we did find that they're a little harder to use on real thick paper like mixed media paper or a really heavy watercolor paper um so I would use them more or less in sketchbooks. Uh, 140 pound watercolor, you can. Um, this is the sketchbook paper, and this is what I did on this one here. So I just to, just to show what it can do, and just some simple thread, and then uh, that's the other side. So you have to remember what side you're putting it on and if there's anything on the opposite side. A lot of times you can uh, do it before you do the other side and then they'll turn out. Hey Dot, good to see you. So we did those and I did a few in my other sketchbook, well not sketchbook, art journal books. So this is the one, I also had a ribbon one, and I did it in this um, Diane Reevely uh, mixed media. This is pretty much like um, folder paper. It's a little bit heavier weight. It was a little difficult to use in the beginning, mainly because error, <laughs> human error, me. Um, but it did turn out cute, and that was the other side. I haven't uh, pasted it down yet, but yeah, I, think I like them. Um, so this is the ribbon one, and this was the uh, mixed media, so much thicker, plus I had paint on it, and this is one of the ones I did with the uh, embroidery. Uh, thread and that was the other side so depending on the stitch you're going to be using will depend on um, what it looks like on the other side now you can always cover up the other side if you find that you don't like it with a just a strip of uh, washi tape or cut out some uh, pattern scrapbook paper and paste over it if that's um, if this side is messy, 
but it's a great idea. I like. Uh, I think I'm going to use it more often and um, see what I can do with it. So this was March 16th. We did that one. And then I did this on my own. So it's a little April type of what April means to me. So umbrella weather, uh, cleaning out the bird's um, houses so the birds can go back in prepping in the garden daffodils are out um, seed lists for if you're going to be doing any vegetables and munch 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 the bunnies do come out full force <laughs> uh, getting your pots ready and mud boots you always see a lot of rain weeds of course they're all out there and you have to start weeding and then I just listed the colors that I did in the book. And this is a great little way of drawing and uh, also having a little bit of a, a memory keeper for you of what your week was about or day. You, you don't have to do it every day. Just write down a few things, even in this book. Write down in, in pencil even just one word of what the day um, or week or even a month um, consisted of. And then you can draw it out. And you don't have to put uh, any kind of lettering in. You could just leave it just the drawing too. So today, um, now this, oh, I'll have to show you this. I used a, I think it was a perma microperm um, pen and it did bleed through this paper. So what I'm going to do with this side is I'm just going to uh, draw something on a separate piece of paper and then just glue it over top and then I don't have to worry about it. So I did uh, go ahead and uh, draw out this uh, Dutch iris and the this is the first thing that's blooming in my garden and it just came out yesterday and it's a beautiful uh, almost blue deep ultramarine blue purple it's it's gorgeous and so i thought we could do this and i also want to put the letter a behind it because like i said we were going to do um, illuminated letters for each month so uh, that was for January, February, and that was for March. So this is going to be for April. So I'm just going to have it in the background. So I thought we could draw that out today and um, see what we can dream up. So I'm going to put, I think I'll put the, kind of in the center here of the page. And I'm just going to draw a line across. And from that line, we are going to put another line. And that's going to be the top of my letter A. And Then I'm going to bring it down. Let's see, the center is about here. So we'll bring it down from the center, I think. And I want it sticking out a little bit. So if we, well, this is going to be the center of my one side. So I'm going behind the and then this we'll try and get it as equal distance as we can. It doesn't have to be perfect. And again, behind, do I want it 
on there. No, I think I want it. Thinking. Hey, Dar. Good to see you. I loved your your um, bunny that you did. I think, it, yeah, it was you, wasn't it? Pretty sure it was. Let's see. Yeah, I think I want it over more. So, erase this again. I want to put the letter in before I start uh, painting. So this let uh, this um, isn't uh, available yet, but I will as soon as the video is over with. Let's see, mm -hmm. I think I'll do that. I will uh, make one up for you and put it in the community page for you. If you want to do one of these, um, that here and down here to there, I guess. Up there. Yeah, you did a fantastic job on it. I loved it. I'm glad you enjoyed doing it. Okay, there, let's see. And I have it sticking out. Let's see. Probably about there. And Like that. And then let's see, we'll put that one across somewhere in here. Like that. And then this is going to go right over here behind the flower to about there. And then that goes across like the other one. A bit higher. That one comes down. It's a little high. A bit lower. Like. Uh, and that one there, it's a little bit high. Like that. That one doesn't need to be in there. Let's see if that, oh, no, that is one. Put in the wrong area. Just have to watch how you're so it's behind, not on top of a leaf. So behind, behind. So that could be behind. 
behind behind right yeah there it's a little smidge that makes a difference ah. Alrighty. Yeah, that looks good. Okay, I'll bring you guys in a little bit. So there's my letter A. So this can be rubbed out now because this will be all joined together. You could make them whatever shape you want. Um, I kind of like it. Kind of cool. Now, my irises are going to be a really nice um, color. And I, I was doing more cleaning. <laughs> and I found my H2O's forgot I even had these and I have a really nice let's see this is rich cobalt uh, majestic and stargazer this is the cobalt is probably or majestic is probably the one that's most like it is the most gorgeous um, bluey purple That's one with a little bit of purple um, in it, too. I might use some of that, actually. So let's try those. And then there's some little bits of um, yellow and a tad of white in it. So I have my brushes here. I did wet my paint beforehand. I should wet these though. So, just gonna put a squirt of water in them and let them sit for a bit. Um, now, you can uh, either go over top of this now with marker, or you could, um, or pen and ink, whatever you're gonna be using. You could even just keep the graphite pencil if you want up to you. Um, I will go over top after I'm done with a bit of ink. Hey Janet, we're doing the letter A and my Dutch irises are in bloom. They started blooming yesterday. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> Something bloomed. I'm so happy. And I will have uh, one of these made up and put in the community page. And I was just showing, um, I did this off uh, camera and this is just basically what April means to me. So it's kind of like um, drawing my thoughts or day or whatever it is. So, you know, the bunnies munch, munch, munch. <laughs> Prepping for garden, birdhouse cleaning, Wet days for walking the dogs, bees are out, daffodils, pots, and that's my colors I use, weeds we need to pull, my boots, that type of thing. So I like doing this type of thing too. I think it's fun. And it did bleed through. That was a perma, microperm, I think it's called, pen. And it did bleed through, but I'm going to just uh, do something and then just glue it over top. Uh, could one of you please come over here and empty the buckets for me, please? Boiler and leak is 
Oh, your boiler leaked? Oh no, Dot. I wish I was close. Be over there in a heartbeat. Don't you try it. Good heavens. So, I think I'm going to do the, um, I might even put a B in there. We'll see. So, the iris is usually, let's see, I wonder if I can show you one. Uh, I think I might have one. Although it would take probably forever to find. Um, let's see. But I do have to bring one up for... Hi, July, June, no, nope. that was it, no, nope, that wasn't it, uh, May, Gonna be April. There they are. Oh, that's not it either. Close though. Hmm. Not for sure I had a picture of them. Hmm. Maybe I don't. I don't see any. Darn. All right, I didn't take a picture. Well, Dutch Iris. Okay, that's not a Dutch Iris. There, blue. So there's what my Dutch iris look like. Very pretty. There's different ones. That one there. Some have a little bit of. Oh, that's more like mine there. They have a little bit of white in them. Okay. So we're going to do that one, I think. Mine's a little, a little bit different, but not uh, that much. So they are um, 
a little lighter on these, the one, the petals that fold up and then the darker color on the um, falls of the petal. Uh, can... yeah, I don't, I wouldn't try to commit yourself, Dar, to drawing a, um, each day. Start out simple because um, maybe you don't have anything to draw. <laughs> like, and, and don't do it so that it's a chore. You don't want to do it um, to the point where you're dreading it, then it's no fun. Well, well what's the point? So, you know, um, try and make your drawing um, pleasing, something that is a treat to do. So maybe maybe um, that's the time where you'll get a cup of coffee, you get to have um, your own little corner of the room where no one can bug you. Or maybe you go outside, sit on the balcony or porch or in the yard or in a go to a coffee shop or um, in a park. And that's where you do it. So it becomes a treat. Hey, Devin. Um, I have to do it, Kathy. No, no one else here. Hard when you walk. Oh, Dot, you can't call somebody? You need to call somebody. What about your um, niece or something? Or our neighbor? It is, but as it has been too cold here they are still very busy oh you're getting a new one but oh i hope you can find somebody i don't really even if mm, don't try lifting something heavy like that dot that's the last thing we want to happen is have you fall in your basement I color with Melissa. Good to see you. Welcome, welcome. Okay, so I'm just gonna, um, this isn't the picture I had, but I wonder if I can get that. Um, did have one just a minute on Pinterest that was like it uh, probably won't be able to find it Knowing me. Hmm. Well, maybe we'll just have to <laughs> wing it. Okay. So let's get something so we can mix. Have this tray here. And doesn't get all dirty, yucky. There. All right. So we'll get this dark, and this has got a bit of shimmer in it. These are the H2Os. Well, I may as well use them. Why not?
And this one is the purpley. It's a different color. It's got a two-tone, purple and blue. So this will be interesting. So we'll use those and might use some paint too. Um, I could add a little bit of ultramarine blue if I wanted to darken it or purple. Uh, why do y'all, oh, um, that's my nickname I've had since I was little, Cass. My, my parents, my friends, everybody calls me Cass instead of Kathy. Kathy. <laughs> it's, <laughs> uh, I missed the end of Kathy and Colleen's because my iPad uh, now plugged in well. Okay. Um, so let's do, hmm, I think I'm going to add a little bit of ultramarine blue to this mix. Just a smidge. We'll see. Just to darken it a little bit. There we go. I didn't want um, too much of that. Um, almost it was turquoisey. So let's do this first. I'm going to wet this area. And this is just scrapbook, or not scrapbook, sketch paper. But it's a fairly nice sketch paper. Uh, meaning I can still move my paint on it. Um, so I'm just going to go around the outer edge with this paint. And let it bleed up. Let it do its thing. And these um, paintings I do in this sketchbook are just for fun, for practice. And that's the best place to practice stuff or find out if you got an idea and you're not sure whether it would work. Do it in your sketchbook. Just have fun with it. A little bit more. Now, if you're working with watercolor paper, this would move a whole lot more probably. Just have fun with what you're doing. Enjoy your watercolor process. All right, so that's that part. And then we got right in here, this, this line here is darker. Right in here is darker. I remember correctly and right in here is dark this is wet into dry so it's only going to go where I put the brush and then I can just take a wet brush and go along the edge and that will help bring that to the edge. And I could always go back and add more. Don't try to get the exact color on right away. Start out with light colors, and then you can add if you need to darken them. Um, this one here, 
was dark. And dark in there. And then I just take some nice water. And you can blend it a little bit on this paper. I just want a lighter edge here. This is the top part of that leaf or petal. And then this part is darker right in here, right where those um, folds are. So I'm just going to put a darker line in there. And then just a lighter color around it. If it bleeds in, that's fine. You can always go back over it. That's the nice thing about uh, watercolor. You can always darken it more if it needs it. So start light. And these are just kind of urban sketching, but for flowers. <laughs> Okay, uh, this part here is pretty dark. This is the underneath of that petal. So I'm probably going to have to go over this part a few times to get the color dark enough. And as I go around to the outer edge, it would lighten up slightly. So I'm just going to take some clean water and lightly scrub the edge of that wa um, watercolor line. Just let it bleed in a little bit. And then this up here would be darker. Right there. This part is, is the yellow, so I'm not going to touch that. This could be a little bit colored. So just scrub it a bit along the yellow part. But it won't be dark. It'll be a little bit lighter. That. And then these here are going to be a little bit different color. So I'm going to take some of this other color here and go along the inside. They're kind of um, cupped when they um, stand up. So the inside would be a little bit lighter. And this one here, it's going to be lighter. It's facing me. And I can go back in with uh, line work or more paint to give it more detail. There's a few folds near the bottom or ripples, I guess you could say. And it'll have a little bit of shimmer to it. I'm going to take a little bit of this color, and I'm just going to go down the center while it's wet. There is a line that... Um, kind of in the petal and then just 
soften it just slightly. Okay, and let's get a little bit more of that color. And we'll do the edges of these. It's just slightly different. It's not um, too much of a difference, but there is a difference in the color. They're a little bit um, lighter, softer looking. This one here. Then we'll also add a little bit of shading where those ripples are. And we can do that with um, a little bit darker color, maybe this color here. Just go along the bottom part of those ripples while the paint is still wet and let it bleed. And I'm going to get a little bit in here. It'd be a little bit darker in there. And let's get some more of that color. A little bit of Just a little bit more dark in there. more of that. And, uh, Cass, are you, are your irises coming up already? Still, snow still melt. Oh, you're still melt. Yeah, yeah, my um, Dutch Irish, which they're a very early spring Irish. Yeah, they started blooming yesterday. Um, my tall bearded Iris, they're all up, but they're just starting. Um, we got freezing rain and snow last week. <laughs> this week's supposed to be nice, uh, warm, but you just, you never know what you're going to get, right? <laughs> All right, so right in here is kind of dark in here. I'm going to make it a little darker. This is a little bit more of the ultramarine in there. You had to turn the air conditioner on? Oh, man. Wow. Lucky you. No, we don't plant anything, annuals, anything, <laughs> until May 2-4. Because um, you just don't know here with the weather. It wouldn't be um, surprising to get snow yet, really. Um, April's kind of an iffy month for us. Just adding a little bit more shadow along the edge there. 
and maybe just a smidgen more here. This kind of purpley blue shade. And a little bit on there, I think. Just to give it a little bit of a different look. And this right here, yeah, we'll see. Is this gonna look right or not? Mm, nope, I don't like it, so I'll just put, add a little bit of this to it maybe be darker because it's folded over so maybe a little bit of ultramarine to it darken it up there a little bit darker in here a little bit of water bleed out and Maybe a little bit more down in here. Needs a little bit darker in there. Just to separate so you can see what what's what in there. And right along here, I'd be shaded. So a little bit of clean water to move it slightly. Uh, right in here. Might have a little bit of a shadow in there. Clean brush with water, let it do its thing. Maybe in here where it's kind of cupped, add a little bit in there. Something doesn't look right. What is it? It's cupped there. Uh, AC to the X dock. You can get weird weather too. It's so disheartening when it happens though. It's like, no! <laughs> Especially when you got stuff up and um, they can't take any cold cold anymore. Like uh, last year, uh, we had a really bad frost in late May, and it really did a number on my hostas. So it'll be interesting to see if uh, some of them are gone. They kind of struggled after that, so we'll see. Not much you can do about it. Take a fine, just add a little bit more on here. Just where those um, ripples are in the like that, and then the center is like like a bright neon <laughs> yellow, really bright. Right in here. 
like, whoa. It's like, here I am, B. <laughs> Come and get me. Very bright. And then the, um, the buds are similar, but they kind of have a light edge around um, when they're starting to um, come out, unfurl. They're actually kind of dark, darker than when they're out. But the um, edges are kind of white, I think, just because they haven't gotten their color yet, maybe. I don't know. So I'm just going to do a dry, a wet into dry wash here. I have a little bit of um, veining in there from the pencil. I'm going to probably just leave that the way it is. Just a little bit edge there. And a little bit of a softer, soften that edge up a little bit. And I can go back in with um, pen or whatever to show those lines. And then this part is near the bottom and it's actually more on the green side so let's i've got some um, permanent sap green here by windsor newton and it's pretty good color and usually see kind of striping it's not fully all green. There's actually a little bit of purple in it too, or this this blue, kind of around the like that. And maybe a little bit on the tip this here and right in here like that a little darker maybe take the tip of my brush and just go in the direction that those veins would be too if, or if you have your um watercolor brush, um, you know, the markers, then the, that's a great way of using them in this. Um, soften that a little bit. Let's do some green here. I'm going to mix a little bit of that sap green. And I think I'm going to mix it with some yellow too. So we'll have a, a couple different greens here. Let's see. There. So a lot of times the tips are a little bit um, lighter color. And then the darker Darker green on the bottom. That's the stem. You can put all the little marks or whatnots in it.
Sometimes they're a little darker. Sometimes they're a little lighter. You can mix, mix up some of your greens if you want. Just to give it a little bit of a variety look. You can even mix a little blue in there. Sometimes they have a blue tinge. But I'll start with this. Maybe I'll mix some blue in it. Let's see. See how this looks once it's dry. I had a strange day with lots of computer issues, new systems at work, and new phones set up. So I got that irritated feeling roaming inside. Sure, you can art it out. That's the solution for everything. You should know that by now. <laughs> it's um, instead of Kelgon, take me away. It's Art, take me away. <laughs> so I'm going to do the, um, the letter A in gold probably I like those silks so they have a really pretty shimmer to them it's not like glare in your face type of it's very pretty it's very soft uh, sorry to hear about your boiler issues hope Yeah, I love doing art when it just takes you away, stops you from thinking. Okay, let's add a little bit of good, um, that blue with the green. Let's see what we get. That's a neat color. Okay, let's put a little bit of that in. Just a smidge on the bottom. Could be used as the shading area. hand. Probably can't get it up. But I can try. But it's just a sketchbook. Oh. Here. Add a little bit of shadow. Maybe a little bit more in here. A little bit of striping. All right. Let's dry that, and then we can do the A.
Oh, you posted one? I'll have to go and see it. Just today or? Oh, yes. Yes, yeah, suppose. Her. You like those, don't, don't you? I don't have any, but. see if you can see this can you see the there see how pretty this little bit of shimmer it's gorgeous i love those those are the h2o's so they give you a little bit of shimmer not not a whole lot just enough to, to um, add a little bit of something something <laughs> all right so um Let's see what other colors I have in those. Hmm. I thought I might have a black shimmer, but I don't. Um, I do have these, so we could. So I do have, you know, all these colors. And I think I still like gold. So, and what kind of gold should I do? I like this, this color here. Let's do that. Oh, they're called something else now. This was, <laughs> these are years and years and years ago um i've had these for hmm, 10 years maybe and you could get all kinds of them um every color of the rainbow and they're very nice to use uh, i'm not sure what she calls them now though um No, don't put yourself in the corner. They were a new... Uh, okay. Now, if you wanted to have a really, really straight line, you could take some washi tape and tape this letter out. But... I'm lazy. <laughs> I admit it. You could take a marker if you have a marker too, if you want to use marker. Uh, I'm just going to use the paint. I like this paint. Uh, this is the paint that uh, Jilly gifted me. I really do like it. But it has to um, soak in to get a really good coat. I find, but it is nice. I think I'll use, yeah, a little bit of a smaller brush though. Let's see, do I have a straight, do I have a cat tongue? Try that. But you want it nice and thick. You don't want to have to go over it twice. 
So I want it really nice and thick. Uh, you're old. <laughs> mm, I don't know. It might be kind of difficult with this brush. Yeah, I don't like it. Let's get something different. Small. With a nice point. Let's see. I like my black silver, what are they called? Silver black velvet. Can't beat them. They have a nice point on them. So I'm not adding any water to my brush. Because I want a fairly thick coat of paint. So it goes on um, fairly opaque. Yeah, my garden's coming up. We're supposed to get some really nice warm weather. Um, starting tomorrow, I believe. Which means I got to get out there and get some of that leaf um, and debris raked up before the plants start growing too much. And I'll start be doing my few more videos of my garden. That'll be on my other channel, which is Gardening Artfully, if you're interested. Um, I didn't do a whole lot last year on it. Just got busy with other things, but I'm going to try and put more up on there this year. So I, I know I do have to do some um, splitting and transplanting. So some people are interested in that type of thing. And I'm a very frugal gardener. <laughs> you're interested in um, garden design, making more plants out of one. <laughs> I'll show you what I do. Splitting and stem cuttings and all that. I'm, I'm not as quick as I used to be in the garden, that's for sure. Before I could spend like 12 hours in the garden and be good as new the next day, but hmm, not anymore. And with my knees the way they are, it takes me a while. I can only be on my feet for about mm, an hour maybe and then my knees swell so then I gotta go and put them up for an hour and then I come back again <laughs> it's like yeah it takes me a while 
but I love it. I do love it. I hate having to split hosses by, but they sure do divide readily. I'm not out of places to put them. I'm out of, oh, you're out. You don't have to split them. They can stay huge. <laughs> Should put a little uh, sign up. Hostas for sale. Just pot them up. That's what I used to do in Cambridge. People would come all the time to get them. Hostas are expensive. I don't know why, because they're so easy to grow. Um, my son um, has a big uh, property, and he's he um, managed to find a greenhouse for free. All he had to do was take it down. So they did that last fall, and they're going to be putting that up in the spring. Well, soon. So I'm kind of excited about that. So maybe I can have a little corner. Put some stuff in there for next year start some seedlings, that type of thing. I used to um, sell plants every year. I don't know. You probably remember me uh, posting pictures of my van full of plants for people. So we'd, my sister worked at Manual Life, and we used to, she used to get orders on at Ma Manual Life, and then she, every um, day for two weeks in May, she would um, load up her car, take the orders into into uh, work <laughs> for me. It was awesome. Okay, let's try that. If I lived in a normal um, neighborhood, that would be great, but everyone around here lives in gated communities and wouldn't think of action. Really? Really? They don't like gardening there? Bad, Dar. Well, you found some art. You never know. Maybe you'll get inspired by something, or maybe you'll get a little bit of inspiration from me. <laughs> Doesn't have to be a big garden, even just um, some pots. I gotcha. I love gardening. I just like the. It's another area. It's, an, it's another time where you can. I can't remember my kids. They used to. They used to drive them crazy. I in my other house um, in Port Elgin when that's where they were raised. Um, <laughs> I had a huge garden in there, beautiful gardens, and I take my coffee out in the morning and just tour around my garden and stand in front of it and just stare at it. <laughs> and they would, they would go, mom's staring at her garden again. 
<laughs> they said, you look like you're crazy. <laughs> yeah. It's just a way of getting away to just, uh, it's just, uh. <laughs> that's all I can, how I can describe it. It's just closing your eyes and listening to the birds and smelling the flowers and just, just um, disappearing into that. I want to try doing more in big pots this year. Love the idea of having flowers in the patio. Yeah, I do most pots now. It's easier than maintaining beds. Still beds, no choice. Oh, you got pots too, um, Dot? Uh, I have to... Okay, have a fantastic day, Devin. Um, I love the idea of being able to take inside the two-year-old plants. Oh, you take yours all inside? Like it's house plants, you mean? Yeah, I take some of my um, house plants out on my deck. It's, and they love it. You just have to be careful. They don't get too much sun or they get burnt. Don't work too hard. Yeah. <laughs> so there you go. There's the, that's pretty good. It's a good um, application. It's nice and shiny. Okay, so now I can do a little bit of pen work on that, or I could put a B, I could put a B there too. Oh, I forgot to put the, the um, center of the A in. That could help. i put that in. Let's see. Mm, probably about... About there. And... Like that. Missed one. Put that in. Oh, that's a brush and work. So that's a fairly thick paint because it covers up that um, graphite pencil, which is good. So if you wanted it just like this and not put ink, you can do that too. It's up to you. Um, I think this needs in there too. Forgot that. Um, I'm thinking about those who can't survive frost because I can see myself digging up a flower onions come fall. Gerber flowers are my favorite. Oh, yeah, I love Gerbers. Gerber daisies. You need a greenhouse. I. That's why I'm kind of excited about my son having that greenhouse. <laughs> oh, I can put stuff in there so I won't have to buy all the 
annuals every year. That just kills me having to pay five bucks for. Do you remember when you could get a tray of six for a dollar twenty nine? Now it's five bucks for one. <laughs> like, uh. so let's see. So A, now I could just leave it like this. It's kind of pretty like that too. Yeah, I just got a phone call. They are coming to do the boiler. Awesome, Dot. So glad to hear that. Isn't her work awesome, Dar? She is such a talented artist. She really is. So I could put, it doesn't have to be black either. I have gray pens. You can get different colored pens too. Um, you could even do like blue for the blue flower. So get a blue pen. Let's see what I got here. Let's try that. Why not? Uh, now, will these... Come out. This is a Bic marking. Don't know if it's gonna come out. I don't have to worry about um, bleeding. Let's see. Yes, it could bleed. That one will bleed. So. Not a good idea, although I had so many different colors of blue in that one. It's a shame. Or I could just color, put a page on the other side. Hmm. in this one here. Um, let's see if I got any. Yes, I have pens. <laughs> I have lots of pens. Um, I could do uh, sepia. There's a blue. That might work. That's a one. Okay. And I have a green. Okay, let's try those. I think they're all ones. Yep. I like. Um, when you're doing uh, fine work, it's it, it's a little bit less in your face. Um, sometimes if you have a, a thick line, it, it kind of ruins the, the um, delicacy of the flower. I bet you're relieved. Holy. It's not cold, is it, for you? Like 
So I'm just outlining this and I'm using a ruler. Oops, that wasn't dry. There you go. You can get different colors of uh, sepia pens too. Um, some are more brown, le less red. Just makes it stand out a little bit more with a, a fine line on it. And then you can just, after it's dried, you can uh, go over it with an eraser and erase any of the lines that you don't want in graphite. It's uh, just a little nicer sometimes to do it in um, a color that's similar to what the paint is. Yeah. Who is humming? Don't worry, be happy. <laughs> New rule, rule set by Janet. Um, <laughs> I missed something. I'm on top chat. Okay. Oh, thanks, Star. Yeah, didn't you do a fantastic job of that bunny? That was so good. It'll be a little darker in there. This is the blue pen I'm using. So I'm not going to trace around every line. I'm more or less concentrating on the areas that would be shadowed. Just, just to um, give it a little more uh, emphasis on the shadowed areas. And sometimes that's all you need. You don't need to do the, the whole outline. Do you want, I'll bring you guys in a little bit more. Just so you can see how I'm doing this. So the shadowed areas would be under here. We'll just go around. This is just a number one.
that. Just flick your pen so it, it um, see how it goes finer if you flick right there. So you start off like this one and then just flick. Oh, did you see that? Let's see this one here. That way it's not too heavy. Yeah, sometimes, yeah, um, I think you have to be careful with them as far as uh, you can apply too much. And when you apply too much, it kind of cheapens, if you will, the look. It makes it, um, I don't know, what's the word I want? You can get too much um, glitter. Sorry for people who like glitter. <laughs> it's preference, really. So. You can make some hashed marks too if if you want to darken more area. Um, <laughs> you're not whining. Gaudy, yeah, that's it. Kind of too much eyeliner. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. <laughs> it's right on. Right on. <laughs> oh, gosh. Now the I can put the some of the lines in with this too it would be nice. Uh, <laughs> oh gosh. Thanks, Dot. Okay. I'm just going to follow the edge because there would be a bit of a um, shadow under this where they fold over each other. So let's see. They're kind of a little bit of a jagged edge too when you look at them close up.
that. So now, now I gotta finish this. Now, I think I'm gonna darken this by just putting some lines right in the middle here. Just a little bit. So that would be darker in there. Like that. And just along here. Now, I'm keeping in mind the um, the veining of this. They do have, uh, some of them are more veined than others, so you don't have to do this, but you may as well. Um, and they start out from the center here. You gotta follow the line um, and the way that the, the flower is growing, or the, not the flower, the petal is growing. So they flare out to the side. And this is when you spend a little bit of time looking at what you're drawing. Let's get your cup of coffee, glass of wine, whatever is your go-to. And look at your plants. You've got the flower that you're drawing or whatever it is and study it. This one here I know because I did study it had straight lines and that at the end around the edges they branched out. So that's what I'm doing here. Some of them had more branches than others. So I'm not going to do it exact, but I know that they do have branches. So that's what I'm going to do. And then it looks a little more believable, which you got. Some of them are a little more thicker than others. Don't make them like little soldiers in a line. You want a fair amount of them. Like that. And then I'm going to do it on this here. And this one, you're seeing the edge of the um, petal curling around. So you're seeing all those lines. These are the things I like. I love detail. You kind of, I, it's almost like doodling to me or for me. Um, it's, uh, you kind of lose yourself in it. Try it. And there's a, just a few, uh, actually I'm going to use green because it's, well, I could use a little bit. Kind of curl down. Like this.
Like that. Now the green, let's see if this is going to be, um, oh, let's try it. No, no, I don't think it's going to make much of a difference. So I'm going to use the brown on the green leaves. So on the underside of some of these, no, they do get a little dead part on the very ends of the leaves. These particular irises are, they're almost like grass leaves. They're very, very fine. Um, you could almost do a bit of blue in them. And they're, when they start growing, they are almost square shaped and they have an actual four ridges, like a square. It's quite interesting. Well, it is to me anyways, but <laughs> I'm weird. I like looking at stuff like that. And as they grow, they get quite long, actually, after the flowers have uh, died off. The leaves continue to grow. And they're actually almost a foot to eight, eight, 18 inches tall, the leaves. And you're supposed to leave them. Don't cut them down until they start to die down themselves. It's kind of the same as um, uh, daffodils. You can't cut those down either because the leaves feed the bulb for next year. So you have to wait till they start to die and then you can cut them down. Put a little bit of striping in here. Like that. Um, just want a little bit darker in here. It's not showing the way I want. So we have to get a little bit of um, contrast for it to show up a bit more. So that means darkening an area. Take my blue again, do a little bit more in here. thicker line there just to show that there's a bit of curl to that petal like this here that that's just overlapping this one, so if, by outlining it, it's going to make it pop up in front. That. Same with this one is behind, so I'm not going to put too much. But I do want 
this part to show a little bit more right in there. around there okay and there is a little bit of white See what I got here. Oh, I don't know if that white pen. Fine. This is I'm just putting a little bit of fuzzies marks kind of along the edge. In between those lines. There is a little bit of a white area beside the yellow. I know I'm getting picky. Like that. Thinking, do I want to darken anything? I can still go over top of this with watercolor if I want to, to darken things. Um, No, that's too, too aqua color. So, maybe. A little bit of French ultramarine, just in there, just along the edge. Just to darken it a smidge, but because I used um, waterproof ink, I can do this. darker there that's good and a little bit right in here it's actually quite dark these um buds
I think that's good. All right. There it is so far. Pick you a little bit. Now the letter A. I think I need a bumblebee. Hmm. Uh, got garden confession. One year I stole a bucket of horse manure from the riding school. I needed horse poop to fertilize my roses after a nasty bug attack. <laughs> the things you need to do, Lena, I, I can relate to that. Uh, yeah, you don't hate to put chemicals on them and stuff. Yeah, that's what I do. Half the strength, but more often. That's how I do my um, orchids, too. Oh, missed the spot. Missed it. All right. So, there's that. And I know this is going to be... April, so I could take a little piece of paper. Let me see. Come in. A lot of times if you got um, calendar paper and pages, you can um, cut out the dates or, let's see, I have those desk ones where they put it. like these ones and you can use the um, dates on them let's see what this one is or your bigger one depending on how big your you want your print So there's April there. March, April. Today's Tuesday, so what we could do. All right, use a stamp. Whatever. It's not the right color. Might have to use a stamp. 
And then you could just put it on like that. Or just a, let's see. No, I have stamps. These, let's see, they're all falling off. Here's April. Oh, that's May. There's April. And a stamp. Either a piece of watercolor paper or a piece of regular paper. I don't know what is that. This looks like sticker paper. piece of paper I could use. A block would help. Yeah. If you had a fancy thing to cut it with, you could do that or just cut it out. Uh, my sketchbook is kind of um, mixed media watercolor, I guess. So there's, and just glue that on like that, or you can eh, position it wherever you want. Um, Where you think it should be? Right on the bottom? That's pretty, right there. What do you think? Um, 
snow. What are you talking? Now Cass could repeat the thing you need to do. What? About organs? So hard because you have to cover up that beautiful drawing. You still get the gist of it. Uh, looked good everywhere you placed it <laughs> thanks dot or no dar <laughs> that doesn't help me i guess i could put it there you still see it as a um a bud i just put some i got Glue sticks, yep, I do. Oh, that one's empty. Um, Janet suggested to collect fish poop. Oh my word. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> uh, I'm sure if you um search the internet you could probably find something someone that actually did that nothing surprises me anymore where And I could put a little bee up there, I think. I know I have a bee stamp. I don't think I put it away. <laughs> um, I'm pretty sure I have a bee stamp. Oh, there it is. See, I knew I had it. It's still on the block. <laughs> I could put a bee on there. Um, should we do it black? Yeah, I guess. well, I guess. Have a bee flying away from it. Sure. Um. <laughs> Bye, Dar. Thanks for coming. Yep. Look for the sketch. I'll put it up probably by tonight. Here's my bee. And we can put the little, no, let's, instead of painting it, let's use a colored pencil. So nice yellow. Paint the bee. That. A little bit of darker brown color just underneath give them some dimension I know I'm getting I'm getting crazy here there I think that's it 
All right, so this is dry now, so I can take an eraser. Where did I put that eraser? And erase any of the lines that are still on the paper. This is a kneaded eraser. I like using the kneaded eraser for this type of thing because it's um it doesn't damage your paper. That's it. Just sign it or date it, I guess. Um, what's the date today? The fifth. Uh, four, five, twenty-two. And then I'll just put a additional. Something else on this side that I'll just do on a separate piece of paper. All right, so there you go. So you can use different colored pens, and that way you stop the um, delicate look of it from becoming very harsh by using a pen color that's similar to the paint color that you're going to be drawing around. Thanks, Lena. So I like it. I think it turned out. I love the A behind it. It's not exactly a old time um, illuminated letter, but Typography, I think they call it. But I think it turned out pretty good. I like it. All right. Thanks, Dot. And I guess I'll let you guys go. So make sure you get your sketchbooks out and experiment. Have some fun. Get into the yard or park or wherever. Blue petal under the bee. What? Oh, it's, yeah, it does kind of look like a hand waving. <laughs> I see what you're saying. You're welcome. Thanks for coming, everybody. And we'll uh, see you on Thursday for Mixed Media Thursday. All right. Let you guys go. Have a good one. Bye for now.